Back when Blender 4.0 dropped, they added an interesting feature to the Blue Tool extension and it's called Box Carve. So in this video, I wanna show you how it works and what it's all about. So if you go to preferences and enable an extension called Bull Tool, right? You go to extensions, enable Bull Tool, and once you do, you can turn it on and you're gonna be good to go. And uh, this extension will allow you to work with booleans a bit faster. So if you're gonna add a cube here and you know Shift D, Shift click this one, Control minus on the numpad, and you got yourself a boolean. Normally this would take a bit more because you have to add a boolean modifier, you know, select the object, blah blah. It's just you know it's a lot of work. You got the wireframe cutter, parent it to the mesh, really cool, it's awesome, right? So that's great. Now, the problem with bull tool is that if you're using hard ups and box cutter, you wanna turn it off because it's gonna cause in conflict. So just, you know, as a tip. But the new addition to this tool is something that's called carve tool, right? So it's here. And you wanna enable the box cutter by clicking on it and it's going to show you a menu here up top. Now this menu is interesting on its own because it's actually outdated. Sorry, I'm guessing they forgot to change the name because watch this, if I'm gonna run a boolean here with control minus, you can see that we have different solvers, a float, exact and manifold. And here we have the old solver called fast, which now it's called float. So I guess they forgot to update it. But anyway, a pronouns aside, what I wanna talk about is, you know, the functionality of this tool. So by default, you're gonna be set to view cut a fast solver, so the float solver, and you know, all, everything here is turned off, and the cutter is set to box. If you click and hold, you will see different types of cutters. So if I align myself to the view here, to solid view, and go to orthographic view, if I draw with my mouse, so click and drag and release, you will see I'm gonna be drawing a cut. The only problem is that, well, the first problem is that the cut goes all the way through the mesh, which is not necessarily something that you might want to want to happen, right? So that's problem number one. The good thing is that you're gonna have auto smooth added automatically to that um, to that solver, and that's also an outdated, I think, naming because it should be smooth by angle. So you know, someone was looking into an old data. But anyway, um, what I want to show you is other options with this tool. So for example, what you can do, you can array the cards, but you need to do it before you cut. So if I'm gonna change it from one here to three, I can draw three cards at the same time. And you know, when I release it, it's gonna cut through. And then, you know, you got the gap defined, you know, direction left, right, whatever. And you also have columns, right? So it's kind of very clanky because it's predefined and you know, you don't have much control afterwards or like during cutting which is what you have with box cutter. So, you know, this is a little bit, uh, for me, this is, you know, way too slow and way too clunky, but you know, there is a functionality like this, so you could use it. Now, another one is going to be rotation. So, you know, it doesn't have to be straight. You can, you can actually pre-rotate it to like, let's say 15 degrees. So when you pre-rotate it, you're gonna have a rotation here like this, right? Cool. Now, next cut is gonna be a circle carve, which is going to allow you to draw a circle. And by default, it's a yo-yo. But if you hold shift, you're gonna have a circle. And you can also define, you know, the amount of vertices on that circle and whether it's arrayed or not, the same situation. And then you have an end gone, uh, or sort of like a line cut, which you can have to click, right, and drag. And you can either use the free angle or hold control and snap it to a grid, which is really cool, actually, right? And then, you know, uh, press enter and you release and you're good to go. So this would be the basics of this tool. So this is way better than the original bull tool add on, but it's still very limited. And I'll show you why it is limited. So if you're going to jump very quickly into 4.4 and I'll show you what's the difference um, and why, you know, box cutter is so extremely powerful. The reason why is it powerful because of all these extra features that you're getting. For example, first of all, you get the control over your cutters. So if you draw a cutter, let me just enable it. If you draw a cutter, you can, you know, uh, while you're drawing, you can actually manipulate with the shape, you know, you can determine the depth, etc. You can pause your cut, pressing tab, zoom in, rotate, whatever, scale it, right? You can also press G, hold shift and move it on the same plane. You can, you know, you can extrude it down. You can, uh, you can add bevels, right? By pressing B, you can add chamfers, you can press Shift T to taper it, you can press T to solidify it, you can rotate it. 
and you can also array it by pressing V and changing the array orientation by simply tapping X. You can press one, two, three to mirror it. I mean, you know, the list goes on. So, you know, this just a tip of an iceberg. Another thing you can do with box cutter is, for example, something that's called an inset boolean. Good luck doing this with Blender. You need a PhD in math. So, you know, one, two, three with X, press T and you got something like this. And you can also, you know, pop a bevel on top of it, which is really cool. So, you know, stuff like that is where the fun begins and when the real speed is, right? Which is why we teach all these tools in our course, The Ultimate Guide to Hard Ops and Box Cutter 2.0. So if you're interested, go ahead and check the website. The link is in the video description and in the comment pinned under the video. These two add-ons, Hard Ops and Box Cutter, and if you combine them with machine tools, they're going to save you about 800% of your time. That's how fast these tools are. And the same goes to, for example, Endgon cuts. If I'm going to, you know, uh, run an Endgon cut here, I can do all the same operations. So press E and, for example, Shift T to taper it. We can bevel it. You know, you can't do this with the vanilla tools. Another thing I can do is I can draw shapes with it. So instead of cutting, if nothing's selected, I can draw shapes with it. Right. So, for example, if I want to draw, you know, a circle very quickly, I can do this or cylinder. Right. And uh, it's just it's just extremely powerful. I can also draw, for example, stuff with a cyclic and gun. So if I go to and and choose line, which is kind of a similar concept to what you saw in vanilla. But the difference is that I can actually draw a shape like this. Right. Add bevels to it, pressing B and, uh, you know, and then extrude it. Right. And I got myself a wall. So you see, you know, the difference between this and um, and something that's so basic as this carve tool is just monumental. And there's just no chance that it's going to be anywhere near quick or robust as this. Then you get also snapping, you know, tools where you can snap to certain elements on the mesh. So, for example, if I wanted to draw a circle just directly in the middle, I go here, the circle called control and draw a circle and I'm in the middle. And, you know, I can determine the depth. I have tools like Auto Depth, you know, AccuCut, all kinds of additional tools uh, which are here. Uh, Box Cutter is just an incredibly uh, robust cutting tool, and uh, I think is you know by far the most um, interesting um, solution for bullions. If you're really serious about speed and efficiency. You know, it's unbeatable in my opinion. Anyway, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. And uh, like I said, if you're interested, grab our course, The Ultimate Guide to Hard Ops and Box Cutter 2.0. The link is in the video description and in the comment pinned under the video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.